who reigns forevermore. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who our son is and is to come. We give you glory. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Father in heaven, how we love you. Yes, we love you, Lord. We lift your name above all. May your will be established in our heart. May your kingdom be revealed in our soul. May your will be done in us. May your kingdom come on other cities in heaven. Let your glory fill this place as we worship you. Let your name be glorified. This is my story. This is my song. I praise you, my Savior. Oh, the Lord. This is my story. This will be my soul. Oh, eternity. I will praise you, my this imagination will become reality. One day this quest of my heart, I will leave it suddenly with that, that all the days of my life I may dwell in his presence and seek his face every day. This is why I cry for my Lord that you be revealing my heart in my mind and in my soul, that there will not be any a second without having you in my thinking. I love you because you love me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Darling, you're welcome to end time holiness teachings. Today, we want to proceed on the subject that we were dealing with yesterday. Take heed. Jesus Christ is the only God that believers or humanity need to follow his examples. The Bible teaches us that he came to fulfill all standard of righteousness. He came at the Old Testament time. And therefore everything that qualifies him to be called a righteous person, he has to live it. He did not only live for that, but he died for righteous sake. There was nothing called sin found in him. And therefore, every person that wants to live a sinless life, I believe he is the only God, only man that humanity needs to walk after or look for. All eternity, it is recorded. In the word of God. Those of you who think that you are worshipping God. God has recorded in his law. In his book. That there is no person given among men. That through him a man can have a communication with God. Through him that a man can have a, 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 a personal relationship with God. Except Jesus Christ. And he laid down the foundation for us. He lived to fulfill all acts of righteousness. 
and he died because of righteousness sake and he required of humanity to follow after what he lived for and in bible he was us about sin Every warning that he gave to humanity was about sin. But I want you to be aware of what sin is. I want you to be aware of what breaks the heart of God. I want you to be aware of things that God, my Father, hates. And one of the things that he said, man should be very careful and aware of, is that they don't do their acts of righteousness for man, but they must do it for him. In Matthew the chapter and number 6 verse 1, he said, Be very careful, take heed that you don't do your righteousness in front of man. Whatsoever you do in the name of man, you get man's reward. Whatsoever you do for God, you, go, you get God's reward. Number two, he said, be very careful not to look down upon little children in the presence of God. Don't discriminate people because of their age. Because God the Father takes much delight in those little children. Number three, he said, don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. It is your responsibility. In all these things, the Lord is giving our personal responsibility to take good care of our own soul. That our soul will not be deceived. In the previous studies, I think we spent little time on what deception means. Deception means believing in lies. Living with lies. Accepting lies. Thinking lies, feeling with lies, things that makes you happy which are not truth. Deception is opposite of truth. Walking in the opposite of truth. So you must be very careful. And beloved, this is the time that many falsehood, many falsehood has been appeared to be truth. There are many people. For the fact that you go to church does not make you a Christian. For the fact that you belong to a denomination, a group of people who have come together, they are all following lies, so that doesn't make you a Christian. That doesn't make you a born-again believer if you are not following Jesus Christ and what he lived and died for. He lived for the truth. He preferred to be killed than calling himself any person else. Therefore, be very careful of your so-called Christianity that you are following after, that permits you to do things that Jesus never did, that permits you to accept what Jesus rejected, permits you to live and boast of things that Jesus cried for. Be very careful of those things. Be very careful of living your life in surrounding with such spirits. Jesus said, take heed. That you not be deceived. Because many come in my name. Many come in my name of church. Many come in my name of being pious. Walking righteously. Teaching righteousness. Holiness and righteous teaching. Yet they are not of me. And you may ask brother Gabriel. How can I identify that? My answer was. When you know Jesus Christ yourself. You can only identify that. When you allow the Holy Spirit to come and dwell inside of you. Oh my God. You can only know that when you allow the Spirit of God to influence your thinking pattern. Because the one that controls your mind controls your steps, your actions, and your decisions. Let me jump today. And uh, go through straight to Jesus warn us to be careful of unforgiveness. Luke chapter 17, verse number 3. Be very careful of 
living with a heart that are willing, not willing to let things go. 17 3. Look the chapter number 17. Take heed. Take heed of not rebuking sin and turning away from them. Luke 17 said sin. The Lord wants us to come and have eternal life with him. He wants us to enjoy everlasting life with him. And how can you and me enjoy that life? Chapter 17 verse 3, sorry. 17 3. Unless we let things go. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if you repent, forgive him. If your brother offends you, if your brother does anything wrong, contrast to what you expected of him, <laughs> rebuke him. Tell him of his mistake or her mistake. Let her know that what she did was wrong, what he did was wrong. And when he accepts it, forgive the person. How many times do you confront people of their mistakes? You're afraid. Have you, me, me, Sometimes even you think ahead and when I tell him or her, she will not accept it. So there is no need. Jesus said the way to correct people is to go before them. Go before them. And if he trespass against these seven times in a day, and seven times in the day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Here Jesus was making a law that when a person accepts his or her mistakes, you must forgive the person and delete everything that a person has done. Forget it. It never happened. The day a person accepts his faults, embrace the person that it never happened. Very, very powerful. Oh, yes, he hurts me. Yes, he must think that it never happened. He broke my jaw. He has now caused me to become blind. Yes, I said the person, he has accepted his faults. What if the person doesn't accept his faults? You must still forgive the person. But you keep the person in the distance because the person has not repented. Forgive the person, but keep a distance. Keep a distance. But this one, when a person embraces his father, he has done something wrong. Bring the person closer and begin to live a normal life with him or with her. Does it make sense? Take heed. Why forgiveness is so important? Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 6. He said, if you don't forgive your friends, your relatives, your aunties, who have done something wrong against you, your heavenly father will not forgive you. Some of you, you don't even talk to your, your, your former friends. There are some friends you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to see their face. I'm telling you, they are bringing you to hellfire. Jesus said, even if you are bringing your offering, if you are bringing him money, you are bringing worship, you are bringing him anything, and you have the blood of the innocent people in your hands, unforgiveness leaves stains of blood in our hands. Unforgiveness soul our garments. Take heed of unforgiveness, of bitterness. Because when you become bitter, you, when you become bitter, the water that comes out of you become bitter water. Bible said when the children of Israel were traveling and when they came to a place called Mara, the water was so bitter that they, Moses has to cut a tree and put it in the water. That the water to become drinkable. In you might be bitter water. And it does not corrupt. Only outside people. But corrupt every judgment. Corrupt every decision making. Corrupt every ways of life. When you become bitter. It's not something good at all. So Jesus was warning us. To be very very careful. That you need to live your life. Not having the thoughts of somebody. Not having the goal, or I'm waiting for opportunity to come, and when I get him, when I get her, be very careful of conducting your life in that manner. You may not get her, but you're always living with resentful life. And sometimes become paranoid. You react. You react. And your actions are always wrong. 
The way you react towards people are always wrong. Living the preconceived ideas of evil is always rubbing on our actions and our attitude. Take heed. Jesus said, deal with that. In other words, in other words, deal with that. Luke chapter 21, verse 30. The Lord 21, 30, he was warning us to be very careful not to become drunk. Be very careful of drunkenness. And when the Bible talk about drunkenness, talking about physical and spiritual drunkenness. Uh, Luke chapter 21, 21-34. 21-34. Go with me because we're going to stay here a little bit. 21-34, Jesus said, Beloved, if you have a Bible and when you hear what Jesus said, very, very important. Whenever you are listening to a man of God and he said, Jesus said, take it very seriously. Bring it to Bible. Can you find the same thing in the Bible where he has said that? To affirm and confirm it. And the child of God who has the Holy Spirit, when a man who is having the Spirit of God is speaking, your spirit is being fed. You feel that something is entering into your spirit that is helping you. And that something is the Word of God that the Holy Spirit used to change our way of thinking that affects our lifestyle. Take heed to yourself, least at any time your heart be overcharged, overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and care of this life, and so that they they come upon you unaware. Let me take it again. Take heed. Be very careful how you live your life. Be very careful. Take notice of this. And the lie this, that's a general thing that God hates. Everything that Jesus said, take heed, was, he was, this is the ordinances of God. This is the nature of God, the character of God, that God doesn't want you to live in contrast to. Be very careful to yourself. Least any time in your heart. That is where sin begins. Sin will always take place when your mind is not feeding upon the will of God. Sin is always at present when your mind is not following after the mind of God. The plans of God and the will of God for your life. If a man is not persistently and constantly dreaming about what God wants from him. Why did God make me the way I am? What is God saying at this present time? If your mind is not desiring and running after those things, I'm afraid you'll turn away from the will of God so easily. People that run after money. People that run after beauty. People that run after lust. People that run after enjoyment. People that run after any other thing apart from God. Leave God behind and run after those things. Be very careful how you allow things to steal your heart from God and test you away from God and move you away from God. And before you are aware, you've lost your eyes. Your light has been taken out. Take heed of that light that has been given to you to legislate your choices. So he said, be very careful that in your heart, that your heart be overcharged with Suffering and drunkenness and care of this life. Three things. Take heed that these things will not come into your hearts. Take heed that you don't allow your heart to be influenced by those things. Why? Why? Because they endanger your relationship with your Lord. Understand that. They will endanger your relationship with your maker. The Lord doesn't want you and me to be in that position at all. Where drunkenness, where suffering, where pride, where curse of this life takes us away from his presence and lead us astray. Understand that. He doesn't want that. And therefore he wants us. To be very careful every day of our lives. To be very careful every day of our life. Be on your guard. 
Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dull by the parties and drinking and shopping. Party spirit, drinking, and the desire shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you to take you by complete surprise, springing on your sudden like a trap. For it's going to come on everyone, everywhere at once. What day was he talking about? The day of the judgment. Be very careful of party spirits. Be very careful of following party spirit. Oh, we want to enjoy. Yes. We want to entertain. Yes. And that is where Satan have taken many Christians. This church, there is not much entertainment. We don't follow Jesus Christ for entertainment. We follow Jesus for enhancement of a proper lifestyle. We follow him. We follow him that we will get that which he died for. Christianity is boring. Oh, really? Christianity has never become bored. I've lived Christianity for my whole life. A day I was born. I was born into Christianity. And I follow Christianity for all my life. And there'll never be a single day that I am bored. Because his presence in my life, his presence in my life gives me everything that my soul wants. His presence, the holy presence in the life of a person that pursuing Christianity grants him every fulfillment. Fulfillment. Somebody may drink in alcohol for fulfillment. Yesterday, I was going to pick my car from a, a mechanic. And I joined a bus and this bus passed by an area. And I saw a very young black boy at the age of 20, 22. This boy was so drunk, drunk, a young boy, drunk, and he was lying on the streets. Sat there for a while, but he couldn't control himself. He lied down. And I was sad. I was sad. Last night, I went to work, came home this morning, as early as 7 o'clock in the morning, some, uh, an elderly black man was sitting at a pub in front of the pub. And he was drinking alcohol. And my heart was aching to see such people in the environment where I live. And I asked myself, what is this thing for? When Satan, when Satan takes you here on earth and make your life useless like that, do you think that you have eternal perfect life? Take heed. Take heed. The party spirit will not steal you to hellfire. Take heed, the alcohol spirit. Take heed, the fashion, shopping, desire to acquire things will not take you to hellfire. Sometimes when I look around my back, my dumping place, the thing that I throw in the bin, I ask myself, is this one my sweat? Yes. It might be a container, but I bought the container. Things that I throw away from my life are things that my sweat have acquired. You may not get the reason why I'm saying this. There are so many things that we buy that we don't use them. We don't need them. We'll throw them away. Are they not your sweats? What are we running after in this life? What are we running after? All that you are trying to acquire, they are not yours. They will come and they will leave you. They are not yours. Why? Because the earthly things are temporal for your soul. Your soul is eternal and he doesn't get satisfaction here in anything in this life. That is why you grow. Everything that you had in your yesterday, you outgrow them. Either you are grow them physically or you are grow them mentally. That you don't need them any longer. There are certain clothes I can't put on any longer. Because now I've grown in size so I can't use those clothes. Although what I used to do was I buy things larger than my size. <laughs> so I grow into it. <laughs> That's another trick. Buy things larger, larger than your size. So you grow into it. So if you are buying a skirt, buy a little bit larger. That is what God wants us actually to have. That our clothes will not reveal our posture because we grow quicker. That is another trick there. 
So what is the word of God saying here? The Lord is warning us to be very careful that we don't get drunk. The Lord is t -t telling us that we must be very careful that the happiness of this life will not take us away. And the Lord is telling us to overcome the curse of this life. The curse of this life. In Matthew chapter 13, the Lord said, The word of God given to people who could not understand the word, or don't receive the word, but the curse of this life is one of the greatest weapons that Satan uses against us. The curse of this life. Take care of the curse of this life. What are some of the curse of this life? What will we eat tomorrow? What will we eat uh, the next tomorrow? Sometimes those tomorrow never comes. You are worried about so many things. So many things. Worry about uncertainty. Worry about things that you shouldn't be worried about. Understand these things because worry, care, is a weapon of the enemy. The curse of this life. The curse of this life. What if? When Satan begins to question your integrity. When Satan begins to question your future. When Satan begins to question your happiness. Most of the time we succumb to that. Be aware that you don't allow Satan to drive you for that far. Because God is able to preserve your life. God is able to take you to that far. The reason why God is saying don't take, don't be, don't, 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 don't give into those things are they are temporal. And they don't define you. He defines you. And then my third, last, the last thing we want to talk about this afternoon is that beware not to be overcome with things that are passing away. Matthew chapter 13, verse 9, Jesus said, 13, 9, 13, verse 9, Who have ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He who that have ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Bible was written by the Spirit of God. Bible was written and given by the Spirit of God. And God wants his children to be very careful and give ear to the voice of the Spirit. Listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. If there is any person that you need to follow, you need to follow the inner spirit of God dwelling in you. Brother but I don't have the Holy Spirit. How can you be a Christian? And every Christian have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not a Christian yet. The evidence of being a Christian is the indwelling of the Holy Presence of God in us. That leads and guides and directs our path into a place where righteousness and holiness will be fulfilled in our life. Luke Gospel chapter 17 verse 3 again. Take care of yourself. It is your responsibility. 17.3 The Lord is saying let us respond to the Spirit of God and let us be very careful how we conduct our life at this time. Satan is using all kinds of tricks. Take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. Let self be controlled by the word of God. Self. 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 Take heed to yourself. The person you need to be afraid is you yourself. The person you need not to follow is yourself. Take yourself out of your pursuit. I, me, and myself. There are so many people who follow self. Why are you doing that? Because I am not happy. Because I don't like it. Because I am not enjoying life. Because I didn't that. Because I was. Because I have. I, I, I. You do things because of you. Take heed of yourself. Take heed of yourself. Train yourself to listen to God's self. Train yourself to submit to God's self. Because that is the self that will live eternally. The flesh has nothing to give. When the Bible is talking about yourself, here it's talking about the flesh. The inclination, the desire, the pursuits, 
Thing that the flesh hath satisfaction in. Thing that entertain the flesh. Let us be very careful. Let us be very careful. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Acts 20 28. Be careful with your flesh. Why? Because all that your flesh will is against the will of God. 20, 28. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Apostle Paul. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, had made you an overseer to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Take heed of yourself first. Before you can take care of the people that God has given around you. A child of God needs to understand this, that we don't live this life alone. We live to fulfill other people's dream. We live to fulfill other people's purpose. Our life here is to make others happy. Our lives here is to make others to accomplish their calling. And therefore take heed of yourself. Take heed of yourself. Prepare yourself adequately well that you can help others who need help. It is my prayer that you see yourself that you are willing and you are desiring to make heaven. And therefore, you have many people around you that you want to bring before his presence. I don't want to take much time from you, but I just want to pray with you this afternoon. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have not surrendered your will to God, that the will of God may rule your heart, that the will of God will influence your choices, that the will of God will direct your path and channel your happiness, that you may do so, that the favor of God will come upon you. In the name of Jesus. You might be going to church, but you know definitely now that you are not a Christian. You don't live like Christ. You don't think like Christ. You don't behave like Christ. You are not a Christian. The nature of Jesus Christ is not the one that you are following, but you are following the nature of Satan. You dress like Satan. You talk like Satan. You behave like Satan. Yet you are claiming that you are a Christian. When Christ comes to dwell in you, you live like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. You behave like Jesus. You love with his heart. Every step that you take, you have peace with God, not peace with only yourself and with man. But you have peace with God, peace with yourself, and peace with man. Are your life not having these three peace? Then I'm afraid that you wouldn't have peace with Satan when you die. The time has come that you are made to run to Jesus Christ and have peace with God. Have peace with ourselves. And peace with man. And when these three areas are fulfilled, Satan will never have peace with you. A child of God is a person that Satan hasn't got peace with. He hasn't got peace with you at all. He will fight you, run after you. But when you have peace with God, don't be afraid because greater is the one who has taken hold of you than the one who is trying to take hold of you. Satan will never give up on a child of God who have peace with God and have peace with himself satisfied come to the area that Christ is all that I need and if I die today he is my reward may Jesus be your reward father thank you for leading us to these divine truths that you came to live for righteousness and die for righteousness therefore you qualified to be a person that should lead us into that place called righteous place. I'm leading your children to you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever they are listening to me from, that their hearts will be desire to have you in their pursuit. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to listen to them. Brother, I want you to pray with this prayer. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. Therefore, I don't need to follow sin again. I bring my heart to you. I bring my mind to you. I bring my will to you. Take it and give me yours. Let me have peace with you. May I have peace with myself. Peace with my color. Peace with my gender. Peace with my figure. Peace with my hair. Peace with my teeth. Peace with my nose. Peace with my eyes. Without you, Lord, I will never have peace. Forgive me. 
of looking down upon your image in my life. Come into my heart and be my Lord and save me from self that I will live for yourself in Jesus' name. Beloved, I want you to understand that there are so many of you who don't have peace with yourself. Before I came on, on air, there was this judge, this young American black girl who was born by a black woman, but she grew up in a white environment. And therefore, they, they made her be aware that she is not. She shouldn't live. This girl have grown up with this mentality that she hates her own mother because the mother was less privileged the mother never went to college she the mother educated her and given her all what she needed and now she said that she doesn't classify that black woman as her mom i don't know if she has bleached her skin color or done anything tone her skin and therefore she doesn't see herself to be black there are so many of you you have that disease you have that problem you don't like your skin color and therefore you want to bleach your skin color some of you don't like your hair and therefore you want to remove your hair if it is possible that eternally you can get white man's hair. And therefore you go and buy Indians who have dedicated their hair to idols and demons. You go and buy them. You go and buy demons, their hair, mommy water things. And therefore your fingernails, you want the one that Satan will give it to you. There is nothing in you that you like. You need a therapist and that therapist is Jesus Christ. The only person that you can't separate yourself from is you yourself. You remain the same eternally. God made you for that purpose. Accept who you are. Embrace that. And begin to expose yourself. And say, this is who I am. You are living lies. You are living with lies. And how long are you going to live with that lies? These are the people that the Lord wants me to talk to. Christians who don't accept God in their hearts. They confess Christianity, but they don't possess Christianity. And there is nothing in them that pursue God. God has made you in his image. God has made you in his image. And forever and ever you remain in that image. Either in heaven or in hell fire. I don't want you to think evil. I don't want you to live evil life. Falsehood. And no person live with that life will make heaven. You might be bleaching your skin in the past. The Lord is telling you to stop. Give yourself five minutes. It will come back again. You might be removing this finger and putting other artificial thing, artificial lifestyle. The Lord hates that. There are so many Christians, born again believer, yes, yet they don't accept themselves. And that thing will not bring them to heaven. There are some of you are living by anointing oil and you're living with all kinds of falsehood. If Jesus Christ could save the world with anointing oil, he wouldn't die on the cross. Know Jesus intimately. And stop following all kinds of this falsehood, this water, handkerchief, and all these things that people are giving unto you. They are lies. And that is the cord of Christianity. Jesus has to fulfill all out of righteousness. Recently, a gentleman had um, a vision, and he was describing who Jesus was. He said Jesus wasn't white skin color. He had the skin color of a little bit darker. Dark. He wasn't purely dark not a purely white like a mixture and he said jesus was wearing a white robe long robe to his feet and his hair was very long and also his feet he was wearing a very old 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 sandals that was made with rubber wow he didn't live this life as a king on earth because he was a stranger and that tells you and me not to live as prince in this earth. Find yourself to be a stranger. Don't give your heart to anything of this world. Don't try to please men, but desire to please your maker. If there is anything I need to tell you, I've made myself clear. Give your heart to Christ. If you belong to a church, continue to serve God sincerely and see God. See God than never before. You can continuously listen to my teachings 24-7 on YouTube. When you click Pastor Gabriel Adade or Love Adade, you get my videos over there. Join me on Facebook with the same names. You get teachings, posts, and other things that I share that I don't preach. 24-7, you can join me on my online radio, gospel radio, www.ntimeradio.com. 
endtimewritingtogether.com or you can download the apps from TuneIn and you'll get my message 24-7 every day. It is playing that radio. You can get it live, you can get recorded ones and it will help you to make heaven. That's all I'm here for, that I help you to make heaven. Until we meet again, Father, I bless you. I worship you that you've given opportunity to know you more, to love you more, and to work after you. That all the days of our life, we will live our life to talk about you, to think about you, and to desire you in our hearts. That eternity, we will enjoy life with you. Thank you because you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.